PhD students in global public health at the University of Cambridge. And as you can hear from my beautiful Dutch accent, I grew up here in the Netherlands. And this was me in 2017. After a heated discussion I had with a couple of friends about the interesting developments in regard to climate change in the United States, about which we probably don't really want to talk about anymore, we decided that we wanted to do something to unite people. We wanted to do something to advocate for more ambitious climate change action. And as any millennial would do, we decided to make a Facebook event and see how many people would show up. And then this happened. Suddenly we stand in front of thousands of people. And it was quite frightening for someone who used to hide under the table when a teacher asked for a question. But this was something that wouldn't have been possible without all the energy, commitment and time that so many individuals took into this. But were we able to make the governments have a more ambitious climate change policy? Maybe. But this was not what stayed with me after the months after the climate march. What stayed with me was the positivity and the solidarity that the people in this march showed. Because not only in the Netherlands was this march happening, but worldwide people were marching towards what they believed in. It changed. There were people that were first-time marchers. There were people that were climate change veterans. But they were all there because they believed it could be different. And they were smiling and dancing, and they were singing songs, and they were inspiring the people around them for the cause they believed in. But yet, usually when we talk about climate change, we see more a doom and gloom scenario. We talk about uh, a couple or more extreme, literally, we are screwed. And of course, there are reasons for that. Probably the most sad example of last year is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report, stating that we are not on track to reach the 1.5 degrees pre-industrial levels. Fact is, the climate change crisis is worsening. There is no doubt about that. And grim environmental news is nothing new. But the change is, the, the, the question is, is this fear really helping? It, does it not have a way of sword circuiting our brains? Is there maybe a way that we can, in a more positive way, stimulate climate change action? Because when you think about it, trying to motivate people with a message that says, well, the climate change is so worse and it's so bad and we can't really do anything about it, is that really going to motivate any change or any action? So I was thinking about this while I was a few weeks later on my way to the United Nations Climate Change Conference as part of the International Federation of Medical Students Associations. And I was there to advocate for more health into the climate change talks. As someone who has been in health for almost my entire quite short life, thinking about climate change in regard to health seems really natural because climate change has a way of destabilizing the rules of human civilization, impacting almost every aspect of health. But the question I got there, and the question you might now be wondering about as well, is how does climate change even impact health, and how has health any relation with climate change and all? Well, the fact is, climate change has a wide impact of health effects, and you already might have seen them in your own environment and in your own lives. Think, for example, about heat waves. If you have grandparents, you might have noticed that they have been more complaining about all the hot weather because there are more recent heat waves. And as a scientist, I quite like to quote some statistics. So the Lancet, one of the biggest biomedical journals, stated that in 2017, 157 million more people were exposed to extreme heat events in comparison with 2000. That is almost 160 million more people. But it is not only about heat waves. We're also talking about cyclones, we're talking about floodings, we're talking about extreme fires. And this is actually causing thousands of people to die as a result of extreme weather events. And floodings might cause people not having the availability to nutrition or clean water resources, resulting in famine, resulting in hunger, and even some parts of the world will not be able to be livable anymore and people will be forced into migration. And that's not all. Think about diseases as malaria, dengue, or diarrhea. 
These are diseases that will be heavily influenced by climate change as temperature rises and participa participation changes. Diseases that were previously only in certain regions of the world might be able to transmit to new regions of the world. And all the progress that we made as a public health community might now be overshadowed by climate change. But one of the most relatable examples is probably the air we breathe in. So as we are in the Netherlands at this moment, I can imagine that everyone has been on a bike before, meaning that we probably all have been on a bike behind a car. So we can all acknowledge that one, breathing air pollution is not that nice. Second of all, it is not that healthy for our bodies. The fact is that a lot of pollutants that are causing climate change are actually also toxic for our bodies. They incorporate into our respiratory and circulatory systems, causing damage to our brains, to our heart and to our lungs. And actually 7 million people die each year as a result of exposure to air pollution. And climate change impacts every aspect of human health. It, it influences infectious disease, respiratory disease, everything I just summed up. And it affects the most vulnerable people the hardest. So it should be no surprise that climate change has been called the biggest global head threat of the 21st century, which again sounds quite depressing. So I was thinking about this and I was thinking maybe we could think about this another way. Maybe there's a way to give it more a positive view. So next to that, climate change has also been called potentially the greatest public health intervention in the history of humanity, which sounds a lot more positive. So I think that we can all agree that improve our health, we would do well to have more active transport. So for example, to bike more, to walk more, to have more sustainable diets. But have you ever thought about the fact that all those things that you do to improve your health are also reducing the causes of climate change? So for example, if you want to reduce your exposure to air pollution to make sure that you have a good respiratory health, then you might choose for cleaner energy, which is also reducing climate change. And it also works the other way around. So for example, a lot of the climate change mitigation strategies that we see promoted have a lot of so-called health co-benefits, meaning that they reduce water pollution, air pollution, and that they reduce the chance on obesity or other diseases. To summarize, the environment and health are intimately connected. It is not either or or, but it is a win-win situation. And there's another thing, because usually when we talk about climate change, we still have images of this. Or we think about some abstract thing in the future that is expressed in parts per million. And that has some way of psychological distance, a way that do doesn't really seem to make us undertake any action. It is really difficult for our brains to deal with that. However, health is a way that forms and overbridge this psychological distance, because there's nothing distant about health. Health is a way to make it personal, to make it about you, to make it about us. It is a way to engage your broader public with the problem of climate change. So, I have seen how solidarity and positivity can lead to a huge engagement of people in the People's Climate March. Because of their positivity and their energy, people were more committed to do something for this cause. So I thought maybe thinking about health as a way, as a more positive view, as one of opportunities, as one of benefits that we can have when tackling climate change. Maybe every time we are talking about our lovely but sick planet, instead of just depicting the planet, we can also depict a picture of our lungs. Because although climate change might be the biggest global health threat, it is also the biggest opportunity for global health. 